Hey guys, my name is Jessie Mew, and welcome back to Equilinox. In the last episode, we set up some apple trees on some of the most scenic hills in this entire world. Now unfortunately, our very first apple tree has literally just passed away, but we still have this one going strong, and I believe that a few more are popping up around here too. We have tiny little baby apple trees and sycamore trees, which we just evolved in the previous episode, so pretty soon this forest is going to be thriving again. Ever since we added in our little apple guardians, they seem to be doing much better. So I think in this episode, hopefully we're going to be able to turn them into the wild boar. I guess that would be a little bit more fitting of apple guardians since they seem to love fruit so much. All they have to do is live in a biome that's not a grassland and basically survive on the fallen fruit. So we'll have to see if we can figure out a way to keep the grasslands out of this area, because unfortunately all of those grass tufts are really taking over. We placed a couple of them in here to help make the land a bit more fertile, but I think we're going to have to go in and get rid of them now. I wonder if there's a way for us to just like pluck all of these from the ground? Because we can transplant them, but maybe if we just remove them all? Okay, so are they all going to disappear in the circle? Yes, excellent! That's definitely one way to pluck them out of our little forest. But we'll have to do the rest quickly if we don't want them to start spreading again. So let's go ahead and remove all of the grass tufts over here. Maybe right on the outskirts as well. Basically, anything on top of this hill needs to go, because that was where most of the grasslands were located. So now it actually says that this place counts as a forest. It's more of a forest and a woodland, but we have to make sure that our trees are going to be happy with that. It's kind of a balancing act, making sure that all of these different things are happy and healthy. Our apple tree is kind of withering away, but I think that's just because it's getting too old. So I guess everything here will be fine, and hopefully from now on our little sheep are going to come on down here and eat these apples from the ground instead of looking for any grass tufts to munch on. I guess we'll probably have to get rid of the grass tufts right here too. We certainly don't want them to be right next to the apple trees. It seems like if the sheep can find grass, they would prefer to eat that instead. And are there actually a couple more hiding right here too? Oh my goodness, this is going to be really, really hard for us to keep up on. I mean, I don't want to start chipping away into our actual grasslands either, so we have to be careful. We want to make sure that our current sheep, who have survived for 12 generations now, will still be able to find their food too. I think the grass color of this area is changing again too. It's a little bit hard to see, but once the sun rises again, it should be much easier for us to tell these biomes apart. So all of our little sheepies are sleeping right now, but as soon as they get up, I'm sure that Pearl is going to be munching on those fruit. Let's make sure that the other task is taken care of. Oh, interesting. So Pearl's diet is actually fallen fruit, but this still counts as a grassland. Oh, do we need to take out like all traces of the grassland then? Oh, that's going to be a little bit harder than I thought. All right, so let's keep removing all these grass tufts. Every last piece of these need to go. Okay, I don't see a single grass tuft on this hill anymore. In fact, it's starting to look pretty bare now. All we have are a couple little tufts of rosemary, and I don't think that our tree is going to be super happy about that. So let's go back into our plants menu and start spreading around some more of this rosemary right here. It said inside the little information menu that the rosemary can grow in the infertile ground too. This barren land that's all brown and lifeless. So over time, they should help restore the soil again. Ooh, a buttercup has been born with a strange mutation. That must be right here inside our forest. I think we placed the buttercups in a couple of other places, but I would imagine that this would be the most likely place. These all seem to be just plain old yellow though. Maybe we have to wait for it to grow a bit bigger. And is the grass really spreading all the way up here again? Oh my gosh, I must have missed like one tiny little grass tuft. I am really starting to regret putting any of the grass down here now. This is going to be insane trying to keep up on this. I mean, we could just erase the entire biome and start again, but our little sheepy guardians are so happy up here, and our apples are doing so well. Ooh, but wait a second. 
it looks like Wolfie can actually change into the wild boar. We can start evolving the wild boar from a Wolfie. So let's click that right away. I'm not sure if it's going to pause if the grass starts creeping into their territory. So fingers crossed, Wolfie is going to be able to keep all of those pesky grass tufts out. That's kind of an adorable name too. Like a little wolf in sheep's clothing. And pretty soon you'll be a wolf in boar's clothing, I guess. We haven't seen how the evolution of animals works yet. All of our sheep are still just plain old sheep right now, and we haven't tried evolving our chickens yet either. Oh! Where did all of our little chickens go? Oh, we had an entire chicken army out here! They must be getting upset about these trees again. Oh, Archie is so upset. Yeah, their environment is really low. Alright, I guess it's time for us to remove these birch trees. Yeah, we're gonna have to start making a little wall of rocks over here. Kind of like a fortress for a chicken army. Yeah, they're doing much better now. That is literally the only thing that's bothering them here. So let's go ahead and grab a couple more of these large stones while we're waiting for Wolfie to finish evolving. We'll go ahead and plop one down right here. Maybe another one right next to the water side. That seems like a pretty good spot to place some tiny stones too, right up against the lake. And speaking of which... Okay, our fish are still down here too. I haven't actually checked in on these things in quite some time. Oh my gosh, and they're on generation 16, 17 already. Well, these fish aren't going anywhere anytime soon. I guess our seaweed is nice and healthy. We'll have to take an episode just to focus on the water ecosystems, though. Maybe after we finally finish evolving our wild boar. Oh, and I almost forgot. How's Griffin doing over here with all of his purple trees? Look how well these trees are spreading. I think it's pretty clear that our purple forest is here to stay. We'll just make sure that we keep selective breeding these purple trees just in case. As long as a couple of these are selected, then I don't think we'll have to worry about them dying off. And did you notice that all of these tiny little button mushrooms are a different color too? I think I mentioned that in the last episode. So they're different from the brown mushrooms that we've placed in our previous biomes. But it looks like our sheep over here are doing pretty good too, and they're on generation 4. So I'm sure that Griffin is long gone by now, but his memory will live on in all of his children, of course. So as far as their colors go, a lot of you said that you wanted to see maybe the gold color, or even cyan. I suppose we could always do multiple colors for separate groups of guardian sheep, but it looks like our wild boar is ready, and I think I actually see him hopping around in the distance over there. Oh my goodness. Oh, how adorable is this little thing? And we can drop him down right next to all of the apples too. So that means that, that our sheep are still going to live on. These guys are still... Tripod? Really? Your name is Tripod? Alright, well, Tripod can live on as one of our guardian sheep of the apple tree forest. We have to make sure that our wild boar is going to be okay. Wait a second. Maybe we should have read about him first? The wild boar prefers to live in forest areas surrounded by trees. It is a foraging animal and will eat fruits and most small plants. It also has the ability to dig up potato plants, which will result in a number of nutritious potatoes being spread around the local area, providing food for other animals. So every little bit of our ecosystem is going to help the rest. But it looks like we need to get some stones in here and cedar trees too. Of course, it does prefer the forest and the swamp as well. But yeah, I think that's probably the problem. It doesn't have its favorite species to keep it happy. The only question is... Are the rest of our trees going to enjoy the presence of these stones? Because we know from experience that some of them get very, very persnickety. Well, let's go ahead and place a couple of stones around here. Just one or two to test it out. How did that do with our apple trees? The environment is actually at 100%. And it's bringing up our little wild boars too. Excellent. So I think all of these trees should be fine with the rocks. And are all the leaves falling from these? Oh, that is so pretty. Oh my goodness, can you imagine a forest just full of these sycamore trees? If we change the color too, it would be like a little fall forest, just like we were doing up here on top of this hill. That would be gorgeous, but one step at a time, 
We've got to find the cedar trees next. The oak tree turns into the elm tree. The sycamore tree turns into the nut tree. We don't have any birch trees around here, but I think that's all well and good because those are the trees that really don't seem to like any of the rocks. Ooh, we can actually start evolving the wobbly tree from them now. Wait a second, maybe we should do that then? Judging by what we need to complete in order to evolve it, I'm going to assume that they'll like this area in the grasslands quite a bit. They need sheep around them, they need grasslands, so surely our sheep meadows is the best place to be. I wonder if we haven't unlocked the tree that will give us the cedar tree yet. I suppose we could always check inside this list right here. Let's see if we can even find the cedar tree in this giant list of stuff. It evolves from the tall tree. I think we actually just unlocked that thanks to one of our tasks. Yeah, so this thing right here. Alright, so the tall tree. An evergreen forest tree. This is the most basic forest tree and is a great starting point for a forest habitat. This tree can't grow on barren land, but only requires slightly fertile forest terrain to survive. So if we place this thing down, then our forest is going to spread like a wildfire. And then we shouldn't have to worry about all of those tiny grass tufts anymore. We do have to keep the altitude below 75 meters, but I don't think we're going to have to worry about that. I think up here was only about 45. That must mean that it can't survive on those really high peaks that we have way off on the other side of the world. So this should be just fine. Let's go ahead and place down some of these tall trees right next to all of our apple trees too. Oh, our species already evolved into a wobbly tree? That was quick. Oh my gosh, and look at our wild boar. Did you see him hopping along those hills? I wonder if we can change his bounce factor as well. Give him a little bit more bounce to his step. Ooh, we can even change him into a warthog. That'll be pretty interesting to see. Yeah, looks like he has bounce power as one of his selective breeding options. Speed, disease resist, colors and sizes. What sort of colors can we make out of the little wild boar? Is there a red color for the apples? Well, this one looks a little bit closer to the red apples on the trees. But if we want something really out there, we might have to go with the pink. But first, while all of our tall trees are growing, Let's see if we can find the wobbly tree that we just grew. There you are, way down here. This place is starting to get a little bit crowded, isn't it? Maybe it's just all of those grass tufts, but we might want to keep an eye on the wildlife to make sure nobody's getting too cramped. Well, I hope our little wobbly tree likes this place. Oh no, it doesn't like it at all. Wait a second, what's bothering you this time? An oddly shaped tree with a few clumps of leaves. This tree is only able to survive in grassy areas where a few other trees are growing. Needs lots of space to survive. A favorite tree for birds to nest in due to the strong branches and long life of the tree. Okay, so this might not be the best place for the wobbly trees after all. I guess we're going to have to build a special little biome for it. Maybe we can make another grassland somewhere. Maybe even right over on the other side of this little lake. This would probably be a good spot for a couple more sheep to bounce around, and it'll have the run of the place too. A little grasslands all to itself. It's nice to see that birds can nest in it as well. Maybe after we finish making our little field of wobbly trees, they'll let us play around with a songbird next. I wonder if any of this has completed any tasks for us? Oh, we have an apple a day. Well, we might as well claim that. So I guess every single day we can have one of our animals eat an apple? Interesting. And that gives us a little bit more of these discovery points to work with too. It's too bad our little wild boar hasn't had any babies yet. Is it just because the environment is so low? I wonder if that might be the case. Well, we were going to see if we could evolve these little tall trees to turn into cedar trees. And we need some heather and some very large size traits to evolve that. I don't think we have the heather though. I wonder if that comes from the rosemary? Yep, the heather evolves from the rosemary, of course. Are our sheep getting too hungry? Oh no, it looks like all of our little sheep are starving. All you guys have to do is bounce in over here where Mindy is, and there are tons and tons of apples. It looks like this guy managed to find one underneath this apple tree. Oh, but I think we're going to have to grow some more apple trees if we want to keep them fed. 
Since we took out so many of the grass stuffs, it's not as easy for them to forage around for food anymore. So let's make sure that we grow a couple more of these. We'll place one of the apple trees right here, I guess. That way, if they're on this side of the world, it should be easier for them to find a little morsel. Oh, Admiral. You're wandering all the way to the grasslands just to get your fill? He wants nothing to do with these apples. I guess Admiral isn't quite such an apple guardian, is he? He seems more interested in playing around with the sheep in the fields. If only we could pick him up and, like, plop him down inside their land. I wonder if we can. Well, we can technically transplant the sheep. Would you prefer that, little guy? Let's bring you on over here. We could plop you down right in between our two sheep herds, and hopefully you'll find this place more to your fancy. Actually, he seems very, very interested in our magic forest. Maybe he wants to get to know you guys a little bit better. We'll have to check in on Admiral after he's had some time to settle in. Alright, so Heather is next on the list. It seems like there is always something else for us to evolve here. Something else for us to finish before we can get to the items that we actually need for our animals. So the Heather requires just a couple more stones in order for us to evolve that. Let's go ahead and place some more of the stones in. Our trees seem to like that anyways. So two more stones right around all of this rosemary ought to do the trick. This one was a little bit too old. It's just about to pass away. Thank goodness their lives don't seem to deplete as fast as the grass tufts. So we shouldn't have to start and stop this quest a thousand times. And thank goodness all of our sheep are doing much better now too. I guess it's because so many of the apples have fallen. Maybe it just wasn't a very good harvest season. And we can't do much if the food isn't plentiful. Oh, Admiral! Oh, has he had a little baby? Snowy the sheep. He does prefer this land. Oh, I wonder who he had a baby with. Do you think it was Ebony up on top of the hill? He was very, very curious of this land. Yeah, I think these two are making a nice big happy family. I'm kind of surprised to see that our wobbly tree is still alive. I mean, it is just struggling along, but it's still kicking down there nonetheless. I guess we might as well start spreading some grass tufts over here like we were planning. Oh, we already have our heather too? Excellent! So while our grass is spreading on this side of the hill, let's go over to our heather and see if we can place that down too. This should be the one. It is really pretty. Purple is my favorite color. It probably won't do inside our birch forest though, because I don't think they actually like the forest biome. So as our heather spreads, that should then allow us to evolve our tall tree, right? That was the point of all of this. Oh, a strange grass tuft has been born. Ah, oh, we can click on that to see which one it is. Is it right here then? Probably since this is the youngest. What happened to it? Is it a different color? Oh my gosh, it almost looks like a dead grass. But being so close to our magic forest, I wonder if it's just trying to blend in. Actually, maybe we should pick that up and place it a little bit closer to the forest itself. This was the grass tuft. So let's go ahead and transplant this and drop it down right in the middle of all of our little sheepy friends. And I guess we'll see if this thing starts to take off. We could always selective breed it just to make sure that it doesn't die away before it gets the chance to spread. It is quite edible too. 106% edibility. So if we're not careful, some little sheep is going to come right on over here and munch on it. Everything else is a little bit less edible in fact. 99%, 98%. It seems to be going down. So this might be a good thing for us to keep alive. Our sheep will be happy with us for sure. Oh no, I think Brax is going to pass away without ever having a little baby. Are we going to have to buy some more wild boar to complete that quest? Well, that's kind of sad. We can try our best to spread the wild heather around ourselves to speed up the process for our trees. Oh, but it looks like the heather needs to be in some lower altitudes. Interesting. We were actually planning on building a little forest inside this valley, so I guess we're going to have to steer our attentions that way next. 
Let's go ahead and place down some more of the rosemary right in between these two big hills. And hopefully it'll spread enough to start building there in the next episode. I'm not sure if we're going to see Prax again. He is getting very close to the end of his life expectancy, and since his biome isn't exactly suited to him right now, I would imagine that he's not going to live for very much longer. But the good news is, look how much grass we have out here. Oh my gosh, no wonder it was so hard to get rid of the grass over by our forest before. But you know, since our wobbly tree is still going strong... Oh my goodness! Look how expensive it is to transplant this thing! Would it be cheaper to just plant some new wobbly trees? Let's see if we can find that in our menu. Oh, that is so much cheaper. Let's just go ahead and plop some down over here. If we can. Do we need to get some sheep around here first? It likes stones and birds, actually. Alright, so that is definitely something that we should focus on in the next episode. The sparrows do evolve from the chickens. So maybe it'll finally be time for us to head on over to our chicken army and see what we can do with them. Let's see, the sparrows evolve with a diet of barley and the woodland biome too. Would the chickens even survive there? I guess this isn't a woodland biome, is it? I believe one of you actually told me that the woodland biome spreads from the buttercup, so maybe we wouldn't even have to worry about the trees. And then as for the duck... That spreads from a nearby species of the water lily, so I guess when we do finally turn our attentions back to the water, that's what we'll have to unlock next. Let me know what you guys would like to see us focus on too, if we should keep trying to build our forests up to be the best that they can be. Oh my gosh, and you did give us a little baby! Sterling the wild boar, oh thank goodness, so our boar family is going to live on? Well, we'll have to make sure that they're nice and strong too before we do change directions. But let me know what we should focus on next. Either sky or sea. Birds or fish. But for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye guys!